Hello, people! Here we are for Tower of God this fine Monday. Um, if all goes to plan, this should have been a surprise um, earlier in the day today. So, do go check that out. You know? Anyway, let's just hop right into the new chapter, shall we? Chapter 203, or 620. Warning, this episode contains depictions of violence that may be upsetting for some readers. On the giant crane... Ah, uh, Mizu, where are you going? To Fug, obviously. Season 3, Trauma Rise Past 5. Did you really station a warp fleet there? Y yeah, just, just trust me. That was the only place where, around here where I could hide it. I parked the warp ship on that floating island. Ah, uh, I see. Over there. That's the island. Th this way. I don't think she's buying it. I remember this floating island. This is where I first settled down. And began living with Traumarai. Yeah, I didn't think she'd buy it. But also, yeah. Oh, it probably looks so good! Traumarai. The art is insane recently. has been insane recently, I can't lie. I should have known. So, you had me brought here. How could you think of leaving without even saying goodbye, Amizu? I knew something wasn't right on the way here. I see what's going on now. That's Enkidu. That it is. Why did you leave without telling me? Come on, let's go back together. Traumarai, let's go home. Traumarai, Traumarai, I, Amizu, I understand your desire to leave home and venture out into the world. We've already finished climbing the tower that day. That wasn't my decision. I never agreed to that. Don't be silly. The gate is already closed. No, it's not over yet. We're going to open the gate once more. Are you saying you're going to betray Jihad's wish? No, that can't be. You remember what we suffered that day, don't you? The people who worshipped us like gods while we climbed the tower suddenly turned against us. Once they found out that we closed the gate. <sighs> Apologies. Early morning. They bombarded us with curses and committed the most bestial atrocities. What in the world did we do to deserve that? If it weren't for us, those losers would have never climbed anywhere in the tower, let alone reaching the top. Are you really going to open the gate and begin climbing the tower again like they want? I mean, I can understand why these people would turn against you for that. It makes sense. You know, these people who never have had a chance to climb have finally been able to get you know, to the 135th floor. And then all of a sudden you're like, eh, nah, we're done. We don't care. Yeah. These people that were probably banking on getting to the top to change their lives and become better, as it were, you know, with whatever their wish could grant, have suddenly had that taken away, you know, by you, and so you are the target of their resentment. Even though their own weakness is the reason why they can't get there themselves, they'll blame you for it. It's unfair, but understandable. That's right. I don't forgive them for what they did. Well, ultimately, I belong with them. We share the same goal. I hate to admit it, but it's true. That's why I first agreed to join you all. I couldn't bring myself to forgive them, but with time, I became less certain of my decision, and I realized this isn't right. Just because you don't like them, 
That doesn't give you the right to close the tower's gate on them. I need to know why our generation isn't allowed to reach the top of the tower. I can't go on living anymore without knowing the truth. Because I climbed the tower with you. And I have a right to know. I don't mean to sound like I'm criticizing you, Traumarai. All I want to say is that I don't agree with you anymore. We're too different now. I can't be with you. I want to see this journey to its end. Even if I have to fight you all. I'm leaving. Traumarai. Am I lonely? Of course not. You're all I need. I want to keep living here with you. Let's not talk about anything scary or complicated anymore. All I want to worry about is how we're going to decorate this pretty home. What, what to wear tomorrow. What to eat for each meal. Am I okay, you ask? Of course. I'm happy, Traumarai. I want to live like this. I want to live together like this. Forever. You said... You wanted to live together forever. Remember, Amazu? I'm sorry. That's just not possible anymore. You've changed too much. I can't stand to see you like this anymore. Because I know now. I know what you do in that new house of yours. What you and your heart want. Oh. Oh. Okay. I think we should go our separate ways. It was all just talk. No more than an excuse. And Kido knew Tromarai hadn't changed. He still loved Amizu. The same as always. Amazu was the one who had changed. A feeling for Tromarai changed and now she wanted to run away. Enkidu could feel rage boiling in him. An uncontrollable, unstoppable rage. I'm leaving, Tromarai. Take care. It was too much for him to bear. Enkidu. Look after Traumarai. He couldn't contain his rage. Any longer. <laughs> when he finally came to his senses and opened his eyes. He saw Amizu lying there. Her body had been brutally mutilated by his blade. The only sound in his ear was the crane's sad, bitter song of mourning. The heart-wrenching melody brought him back to reality. A moment later, his body was overcome with a terrible chill. Enki had lost control. <laughs> What have I done? He couldn't hold back. The fury within him. Well, there it is. This grand tragedy reaches its conclusion. As I'm sure we'd all suspected, Amizu was not long for this world. And truly a shame, though it is, Expected just as much so. Really good chapter. That was really good. I can't lie. Really, really good stuff. I really enjoyed that. And I just want to go on a, a tangent a little bit. Kind of related to the fact we've had a flashback arc. But people aging in the tower. It, it, I don't know why it came to me. Um, literally when I was trying to sleep last night. It kept me up for a little bit. Has it been mentioned? I can't remember ha why people stop aging. I assume it's a deal with the administrator that happens at some point, right? But, because obviously, we've seen someone like Jin Sang Ha, who looks like, you know, he's in his mid-40s, right? He looks like a an aged fellow, right? But then you've got people like Traumarai, who here, 
God knows how long ago, looks young, right? Relatively young. And he looks the same in the future or the present when God knows how much time has passed. And we know that people don't age because obviously Jin Sung Ha is like tens of thousands of years old. So he's stupidly old but looks like 40. And you got people like Bam who, relatively speaking, is stupidly old but looks like 18, right? But you take, again, mainly the 10 great family leaders. They all look about the same age as they did here now. So they've not aged physically. But you take someone like Jihad. You compare J Data Jihad to present Jihad that we see during the Data Floor arc. And there's a noticeable difference in appearance. And it's not just because of how they're dressed. Like, Jihad's face is more mature, more kingly. Uh, pardon the, you know, how on the nose that is, right? Maybe I'm just forgetting something given how long it's been since, um, since reading all of Tower of God, but, and it might be in a blog post that I've not read from a long time ago, but someone explain that to me in the comments, because it's been interesting. It came to mind recently, especially with this flashback. But, um, yeah, really good stuff. Uh, this was a great chapter. I hope you all enjoyed. That out of the way, I've been an Aussie, you've been you, and I hope it's time for another video. It's a for now.